Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? NFL league year is underway. On uh, Tuesday, we learned that the Saints would not be re-signing Marcus Williams, that he had, in fact, agreed to a deal with the uh, the Baltimore Ravens. We talked about possibilities. One of them, of course, was Tyron Matthew. And uh, last evening, we learned, though, that it would not be Tyron Matthew in that spot, that it would, in fact, be Marcus May. Now, this is a name that probably sounds familiar to some. Marcus May played his collegiate ball at the University of Florida, so... A lot of people in this region are familiar with with May. He was drafted in 2017, the same draft as Marcus Williams. They were three picks apart. So Marcus May was picked three picks ahead of Marcus Williams in the second round of the 2017 draft. He's been a full-time starter ever since, although in two of his five professional seasons, he's played in just six games. The other three, he's played in all 16. But this is a guy in Marcus May that bet on himself a year ago. He played under the franchise tag, just like Marcus Williams did, bet on himself, and ruptured his Achilles. So he played in only six games for the Jets a year ago, lost a ton of leverage, obviously, and now has agreed to a three-year, $28.5 million deal with the Saints. To put it flatly, uh, he is an older player. He has been an injury-prone player and he has been a less productive player than the guy the Saints had in Marcus Williams. This is a, uh, you have degraded the position if you are New Orleans. Um, but it's not altogether a, a complete net negative. I think Marcus May can be a, a pretty nice player. Uh, his best season was two years ago, the COVID year. Started every game, had a couple of interceptions, had a couple of sacks, 11 passes defense. That was a career high. He's a, he's a natural free safety, but can play in the box when you look at sort of his whole uh, his whole profile. Um, and he was voted as the Jets MVP by his teammates in 2020. So again, guy who seemed to be peaking, bet on himself, injury last year. Now he's coming off that ruptured Achilles. The Saints, of course, went through this with Quan Alexander with great results, So and also with Sheldon Rankins. So I don't think as an organization they are altogether completely turned off by the torn Achilles because they've been through it with two of their star players who who came back and uh, performed very well. I, I am impossibly biased, y'all, but I would have obviously preferred Tyron Matthew. And here's a couple of reasons why. Look, I told you Marcus May and, and Marcus Williams were each taken in the 2017 draft. Marcus Williams is 25 years old. He's going to be 26 in September. So when the season starts, he'll be 26 years old. Marcus Williams will be. Marcus May, again, same draft, is 29. He's three years older than Marcus Williams, but they enter the league at the same time. So you have an older player that's coming off a serious injury that's been less productive throughout his five years. That's why he's more cost-efficient, obviously. But if you compare it to Tyron Matthew, Tyron is also 29 years old. Tyron Matthew and Marcus May are the same age. But Tyron came into the league in 2013. So Tyron's played four more seasons at a much higher level, but is the same age. Um, well, I say that. Tyron's going to be 30 in May. So he is 10 months older than Marcus May, for whatever that's worth. Um, but a three-year deal for Marcus May, it's team-friendly. It allows you the space and the capital that you need to be able to maneuver in free agency as you need to. A $70 million deal for Marcus Williams would have certainly hamstrung this team. This allows you the possibility to add Deshaun Watson on a team-friendly deal if you can do it. It allows you the possibility of still re-signing Teron Armstead if that's the direction they want to go. So there, there are positives and negatives. You're not as good at safety, but there are trade-offs as well that a $70 million Marcus Williams contract would have hamstrung you, this one does not. A couple of caveats. And by, by the way, I also want to say this. Dennis Allen, remember, he played defensive back at AM and on those wrecking crew defenses. He was a secondary coach. When he was on Peyton's staff initially, he was the secondary's coach before he left to go be the DC in Denver and then the head coach. 
So his forte is in the secondary. And since he's been in New Orleans, they really have hit on players in the secondary. If it's Marshawn Lattimore, if it's Marcus Williams, if it's C.J. Gardner-Johnson, if it's Paulson Adebo, like they've hit at that spot. So I do trust Dennis Allen, his talent evaluation, his ability to maximize guys in the secondary. And if they are able to get a deal done for Deshaun Watson and it's left them with only mid and late round picks, I think they'll be able to find value because they've shown they can do that. Um, two things. Number one, I would tell you um, the possibility of adding Tyron isn't completely gone because, again, here's the caveat. If you do a deal for Deshaun Watson, it's likely going to include a player or players. Houston has said they want players on cheap rookie deals. Makes a lot of sense. Well, guys that fit that bill are guys like Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. And if that's what it takes to get the deal done, I'd be devastated because I love C.D. Deuce. I love him on this team. I say it all the time. Hated him at Florida. Hate him when he's on the other team. Love him on my team. But if that guy is part of the trade, well, now you've got Malcolm Jenkins, you've got Marcus May, you do have a spot open for a nickel safety, and maybe that could be Tyron Matthew. Again, I'm just spitballing, but he would fit the mold of the role that C.D. Deuce plays in this, on this Saints defense, and it would make sense. The other thing to keep in mind is the other bit of news with the Saints in the secondary is that they restructured Bradley Roby's contract. Remember, he had no guaranteed money on this year's deal, So by but he had, he had a... a a cap number north of $10 million. So there was no way he was going to play this year under that number. So they signed him to an ex extension, which lowered his cap number this year and kept him on the roster. That might be an indication of what they may be forced to do with Deshaun Watson. If Deshaun Watson, if in that trade the Texans want Paulson Adebo, well, now you've got Lattimore and Roby as your starters. It would suck to lose a young player like, like Paulson Adebo. But again, consider what it is you are trying to acquire, who it is you are trying to acquire. An elite, all-pro caliber quarterback in his prime at 26 years old, yes, you give up players and picks for that because the only way you land that, except for this historical oddity, is if you're bad enough to, drop, to draft at the top of round one and you get that guy. So uh, some of the moves the Saints are making strategically might also be positioning themselves to do a deal for Deshaun Watson in case if that possibility happens. If it doesn't, and Watson ends up picking another team, then the Saints very likely would act quickly to re-sign Jameis Winston, and then you fill in the pieces around that with whatever uh, availability you have in free agency and then in, in the draft as well. So, But the news for now we know is that the Saints have uh, reached a deal with Marcus May to replace Marcus Williams three years, $28.5 million dollars. They've also extended Courtney Roby, so the pieces in that secondary are starting to come together here as our free agency gets underway. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.